In this video, we're going to talk about the Shamir. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how it might have been used to carve these rocks. Hi everyone. I became extremely excited today when I discovered a new ancient high-tech device mentioned in the Jewish Talmud. It's called the Shamir of Solomon and was apparently used to cut stones of the original temple, which has not existed for two and a half thousand years. Normal tools can be used as weapons. Solomon insisted the temple stones be cut with something which could never be used as a weapon. So he used the Shamir. Now, if you think this Shamir must have been a kind of saw or chisel, you're in for a shock because that's not what the ancient people state. Think laser. Think radiation. The earliest legend states that the Shamir was a green stone which had to be kept inside a lead box to stop it cutting or destroying what was around it. Legend holds that the Shamir could easily disintegrate or cut stones, iron and diamonds by looking at them. And that was what it was used for. Cutting by looking? I suppose this means emission of rays. Let me explain. In ancient times, people thought that the human eye operated like a radar by first emitting light. They thought the eye emitted light because the eye looks like a lens. It emitted light to look at something, focus, focus on it, and then receive that light back. I personally think the idea came from when you enter a dark room, you at first see nothing, but like a candle or lamp switching on, then you start to see with your night vision. Hence, eyes must emit particles or light, or so they thought. Substances to be worked, rock or jewellery, were simply shown to the Shamir, whatever that means, and the gaze would cut or obliterate that substance. This means the Shamir could see things and destroy them, like the Medusa eye. Fine letters could also be burned on jewels. Now, in order to acquire Shamir, Solomon searched everywhere for this green rock. He finally found enough, and enough was about the size of a barley corn, less than a centimeter. That was the Shamir. So how could something so small be so powerful? And I have to postulate, as others have, that the legend describes an artificially enriched nuclear substance. So, how did the Shamir work? The legends seem to have combined stories of a stone which obliterates from a distance with stories of an indestructible stone used to carve other stones. Two different devices, but both seem to be referred to as the Shamir. It is possible that diamonds were confused into the Shamir legend. In my opinion, storing something dangerous in a box also sounds a lot like the Ark of the Covenant, and the two stories might well have a common ancestor. This is the other story which no one hears about. It is said the Shamir was still remaining in ancient times, but by Nebuchadnezzar's time of the 500s BC, the Shamir is said to have lost its potency. This could be about the time the Ark went missing for good. It might have been taken to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. If so, it never came back, and a secret cabal of the priests of Judah seemed to have conspired to prevent the disappearance of the Ark from becoming known to the general public. They pretended it was still stored in the Temple of Solomon in the Holy of Holies in order to maintain power, and even built a new temple. But it was certainly never shown to the public again, and never appears in history after that. Of course, one way the Shamir could have lost its potency is it was initially highly enriched and pure, and its half-life simply expired and it was no longer effective. Radioactive substances seen through lead-doped glass do look green, 
And we know from the legend that lead was used. The implications are unbelievable because we can start to see the Ark and even the pyramids as possible containment devices for enriched radioactive materials made by some ancient civilization. Now, the Shamir legend also has a biological component. If you look it up, you'll see it's also described as a worm, a worm which was in the box. Well, what does radiation do? It chews through things like a worm. I'm skeptical about the Shamir being a worm because this idea comes from later legends written by later peoples who did not conceive of radiation or heat to cut stone. I'm not the first to suggest the Shamir was nuclear. For instance, Velikovsky made the connection. Uh, but I might be the first to suggest it was used to carve these. Not sure. People must have asked how it was done for generations, so the answer was preserved in Jewish text, just in case anyone was curious. And what an answer it is. If the Shamir was not enriched radioactive substance, why was it green? and Why would it be dangerous? And how would they know to store it in lead? Even Velikovsky was not daring enough to get into these implications. But let's study them. The Shamir would have been developed possibly in ancient UK in what appears to be the ruins of an ancient cyclotron I discovered via satellite mapping. This is a huge structure which lies underneath Stonehenge and Old Sarum, possibly operated by the ancient giants, such as were buried in the epic sarcophagi of pre-Egypt. I think the ruins and tunnels of this epic UK structure may have later been called the Canals of Atlantis by later ancient peoples, I think that Stonehenge was built on top from the ruins by astronomers as a commemoration of this weird old science. The Solomon being described in the legends also isn't the 1000 BC Solomon. Stories recorded in the Talmud and other texts hold that this Shamir is one of the ten ancient wonders that were created just before God finished creating Earth. I suppose the ancient historians were trying to reconcile the creation of the world story in 4000 BC with some older story which stretched way back further, earlier than 4000 BC. There was no room to place it in the regular chronology, so they just said, just before creation, to be religiously consistent. What they really mean is this is very ancient. Solomon's Shamir might also explain the long shafts seen in the Great Pyramid, possibly used for gravi gravitometric or radiation experiments. I'll put links to both the videos, the one about the cyclotron and the one about this at the end so you can watch. Everything is beginning to tie together. According to legend, the Shamir was created during the twilight before creation. Other strange things were created in the twilight before creation, such as demons. To me, the twilight sounds like the Cherenkov radiation, the strange light created in nuclear reactions. Kufu's horizon, the name of his pyramid, has been translated by archaeologist Mark Lena as Kufu's twilight glow, the twilight before creation. I think these rocks were either cut or poured. In the past, I've shown an example of why they might have been poured, say in Cuzco, but other huge rocks were obviously cut. Perhaps the, the Cuzco rocks were uh, poured or plastered over with a facade, a geopolymer facade, in imitation of earlier cut rocks. So stay tuned for part two to see how, possibly using the Shamir of Solomon. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video, do subscribe and share. On my channel you see some of the most epic theories ever, and I'm never saying they are necessarily the way things have to be, they are merely ideas I've come up with over decades of research, ideas I've stuck with and stand by through thick and thin, but not through belief, rather evidence. Uh, I've also got a patron uh, if you want to consider that, if you want to help out. Thanks very much, leave your comments below and have a great day.